Our next speaker, Siko Muro, will conduct a session on the importance of grassroots research, inclusive design, and overcoming geographical and language barriers to create more effective and impactful designs. Join me in welcoming Siko to the stage. Everyone. My name is Sokka Madao and I'm basically representing Human Insights Africa where we're going to be speaking about the topic making people human but expanding on research in the grassroots. I'll give you guys a brief case study so you guys can have a holistic overview of the topic of geographical research, inclusive design and language barriers. We worked on a project, uh, um, on a project and this is how we conducted the research. So we conducted the research in a rural area where it's known to not have any nearby hospitals or nearby supermarkets. We had to look at the way the, of the, the people of the communities looked and behave in a way they believed is appropriate. By wearing the same way, greeting the same way, or how they greet each other and treating them how they treat each other. Now these images depict on what I've mentioned before on how we dress the same way, where my colleague covered her hair in retrospect of how the culture lets the woman cover their hair, wear dresses. But the, the key thing here is that they spoke the same language considering the fact that this is a Zulu speaking community. As you can see here, the man with the blue shirt is the chief of that community. Now the subject matter of this research was how does money move in that community? And these are the type of things that we took into account because the banks do not take geographical research into consideration, specifically in rural areas and basis of the environment. Now, why I say this is because this puts or begs to differ on how I would speak about geographical research, language barriers and inclusive design. But before I continue, I just wanted to give a quick introduction of myself. My name is Saka Madao. I'm 25 years of age and I am a product designer at Human Insights Africa. Um, I currently reside in Kempton Park, Johannesburg, South Africa. I study computer information sciences and my favorite things to do is arts. Food is my spirit animal, but I also love listening to music and continue to, to emphasize on my creative elements. My key motivations in my career is that I love exploring and innovating with things I produce, but also getting better at making useful and usable desirable objects. Now, the key things that I've mentioned here again is geographical research, language barriers and inclusive design, because my priority here is achieving the user's goals. But the first thing here is that what is geographical research? It's the process of collecting data to assist the connection between people, places, and environments. It's more like finding what makes people. And the key topic here is making people human. Because sadly, our world operates on stereotypes, environments, cultures, and languages. Now, why is it important, specifically in UX research? Firstly, it allows us to understand the nature and the extent of the problem with a different eye. It also allows us to be empathetic and empathize with the users of the participants without any barriers between us and the people we are conducting research on. Furthermore, it also gives us the opportunity to actually be the, in the participants' world and make them comfortable enough when we interact with them so we can gauge for quality insights. But lastly, it also allows us to tackle problems differently without overlooking them. Now, I'll give, I'm going to give you guys real life examples of geographical research. I've listed three towns on how people in South Africa associate these places and environments. The first one is Johannesburg CBD Hellbrow. People associate it as unsafe, you cannot do as you please, um, and you always have to overlook or look over your shoulder. Whereas in Cape Town, South Africa, it's known to be a tourist attraction and you just have fun. I'm not saying it is as safe or it's safe, but it's safer than Johannesburg CBD. Whereas Umlazi is known to be best of both worlds. Now, I have a question for the people in this call. How do you associate environments in your area or your country? But before you answer that question, 
I have even a deeper example of small streets. It's one of Johann it's this one is Johannesburg's um CBD's most popular streets. But how do you go about con conducting research with the people here? Let's say if you don't know how to speak the language, you don't know how to resonate with the people around there. And then this is where geographical research aspects can apply. Now, I'm going to speak about language barriers because I asked the question of, let's say you do not know how to speak the language in that area that you're conducting research on. So I have to put it out there that we have a big problem in the UX community. There is a very strong language barrier in user testing between users and the UX researcher slash designers. Now I'm going to give you guys like a personal example within my country because COVID-19 really exposed the digital literacy divide. Considering the rate is at 78%, that's really sad. Now, the main contributor here to the limited digital literacy is that of the 11 official languages, just putting it out there, we have 11 official languages, only English and to a lesser extent Afrikaans. Academic content is widely available online. Now, what happens if a child who does not know how to speak English and Afrikaans has to access academic material? There is a very strong digital divide considering language barriers in our country. Now, how do we overcome that? Firstly, you have to assign a UX researcher or designer who knows how to speak the language. But let's say you're a small organization who doesn't have the resources. Then it goes to the second point where you hire a local moderator. Now, here are the three quick tips when working with moderators. The first one is that you have to go over the study objectives and the moderating manual. This helps guarantee appropriate data when collected and also you guys are aligned. But also your moderator can also get some expertise on making it better. The second thing is that you guys beforehand have to check or discuss the technical setup to avoid any technical issues or difficulties during the session. And lastly, plan a practice session with a real participant and a translator simultaneously. This creates an opportunity for you guys to um, refine your moderation guidelines understanding your moderator's demeanor and making sure that the translator is familiar with the interview subject matter. Now this image here illustrates how a moderator, participant, translator and a note taker can coexist or work together in general to get or gauge quality insights. Now I'm going to end off with the last topic of inclusive design and its importance of it in general. Because I've mentioned geographical research and language barriers. Because it supports the full range of human diversity. While accessibility emphasizes, emphasizes on adapting people's varying abilities, inclusive design takes a variety of perspectives. And when I say perspectives, geographical research where we talk about associating environments, associating cultures, but also avoiding language barriers including those of those individuals with disabilities, we take into account during the design process so that we emphasize on quality research. Now I'm going to end off this presentation. Within the design process, when you design for yourself, how do you believe you could design for your future self? And when you have the answer to that question, you have successfully, succeed, you have successfully managed to go through an inclusive design process. Now, if you guys have any questions, queries, comments, or jokes, let me know. I thank you guys for listening to this presentation.